Scripting has allowed Halo 5 Forge to be the single most varied and in-depth version of the editor to date. A massive leap forward from H2A scripting, Halo 5's while amazing is admittedly a little complicated. In this video, I'll teach you three easy to learn scripting techniques that you can use to push your creations to the next level and to introduce you to potentially harder scripts in the future. Welcome to another episode of Understanding Forge. For the sake of ease, we'll be opening a door using three different scripting methods, all of which can be applied to a wide variety of different actions. I've got my first door here. Now I'm going to get a terminal which can be found under the scripting tab. Scroll down to the script tab in the object properties and add a new script. Our condition will be interaction, and our action will be message channel toggle. There's an A to Z range of channels, and an interaction can turn the channel on or off as where toggle will rotate between the two. Now go to the door. Taking note of our XYZ measurements here on the screen, I know that the door is 12 units tall. This is important. Add a script to the door. Our condition will be power check channel alpha on. Our action will be move offset. Remember, the door is 12 units high. I want to raise it without it disappearing from the frame, so I will set the vertical movement to 11 units. I want the movement overall to last 2 seconds. Now add another script. Condition power check alpha off. Do position reset. This will put the object exactly back where it was spawned. Set this timer to match the first. Now we go to our switch, activate, and boom, a door that can open and close. Now, if you don't want players to spam the door, you can set up what I call a safety. Let's return to our terminal and our script. Let's add another action and set it to switch interactive off. This will make it so the switch is unusable. Add another action and set this one to wait. Since the door moves for 2 seconds, I'm adding a 2.5 second cooldown on the switch. Add one more action, switch interactive on, and boom, the switch will be usable again. As you can see here, our ability to interact goes away and then returns. Let's start our second technique, scripts via destruction. We'll duplicate our door since the scripts on the door will be the exact same as before, but don't forget to change your power channels because those will be different. Next, spawn an object that can be destroyed. I'll use the exploding UNSC barrel. Create a new script and set it to destroyed slash despawn. Like before, our action will be power set, but instead of toggle, we're going to explicitly set this to power on. Open a new script and set the condition to spawned and action to power set off. Scroll up to the respawn timer and make sure that it actually will respawn. Not all objects respawn by default. I'm going to use a 5 second respawn to illustrate my point here. And just like that, destruction equals open doors. Let's start our third technique, scripts using zones and despawning slash respawning items. Like in all sci-fi movies ever, I want this door to open when a player approaches it and then close on its own. On the door, we only need one singular script. On message receive, channel alpha. Please note that message channels and power channels are 100% separate. Add another action and set that to wait. I want the door to stay open for 5 seconds, 
so I set time to 5. Add a third action and set that to position reset like before. Now we need our zone. Well, let's go into the scripting tab and grab a script brain colorable. Change the physics to phased and define a boundary, i.e. the range for players to be in for the door to open. Set the brain and zone in place. Now open a new script. We only need one. The condition will be boundary check, enter, and set that to players. The action will be message send alpha. I want the door to make noise when it opens like a normal door typically does. Go into sounds and grab a sound of your liking. I'll be using one of the default door sounds. You'll notice that this noise is continuous on its own. Let's make it so it only plays when the door is actually moving. Open a new script. Condition, round start, action, despawn. Add a second script. On message received, alpha, action set to spawn. Set this to force. Add another wait action, equal to the movement time for the door. And finally, add a final action to despawn. Open a third script. This will control the noise when the door is closing. Let's remember that the door moves for half a second and then stays open for five whole seconds. That means by the time the door starts to close, five and a half seconds will have elapsed. Our first action will have to be set to that time, so 5.5. Our second action will be spawn, so that the noise starts actually playing. Again, we'll set wait to 0.5 seconds for the door to travel, and add our final action, despawn. Once you're all done, you'll get this result. There we go, those were three scripting techniques that I use to open doors and spawn sounds, but you can use them for a wide variety of actions, just using doors as an easy representation of what can be done with them. These are also great scripting methods to get you introduced into more complex methods of scripting, and now that you know these, you can adventure and explore on your own and learn more scripts. If you liked the video, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Drop a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend. We're on the road to 1,000 subs, folks, and I hope to see you with me there soon. Until next time, I'll catch you guys later.